And boom, it's Bench Monster TV, baby. I'm Ashley Lynn Condre. I am the Bench Monster. Welcome to Bench Monster TV. Thank you guys for joining us on your Thursday evening, as always. Wherever you we may be. We appreciate and love having you here. Uh, we got a good episode for him, I think. Yes, we do. We always have a good episode. We always have good uh, um, videos that were emailed to me, ones I find. And uh, yeah, we got we got a quite a plethora of awesome people doing awesome things. Yeah. So this past week, Saturday, we attended uh, Skip Sandberg, who was recently passed away at the I age of eighty three. Post that picture of his little like memorial, memorial display that they put together. Yeah. They like put together a display of like all of his medals and trophies and you know pictures. It was just a display of skip and his powerlifting curry you know i just i had his i had his um lifting shoes yep. lift and you could just tell that you know they had been worn and were just this like super um what's the right we're sentimental sentimental piece of, yeah uh, he was very well known history, and kind of i mean so many records were made in those shoes and his belt was there and um it was a tearjerker definitely yeah you know he was a well-known pacific and northwest power lifter he was and, a legend around here yeah you know um and i was able to get up and tell my story about yeah, uh skip sandberg did. wrapping my knees so tight and he did a really nice job yeah uh, it was hard to get up there and do that and uh but you know i wanted to be there and, and he did uh, really good he spoke very well i people enjoyed the story i think yeah and um yeah, no, so, you did really good. I felt really good by going, and I wish other people could have made it, but, you know, things happen, and you can't make it, but uh, we were there, we took it all in, and and um, I really feel good that I went. Time, yeah. We stayed there, they shut it we down. We stayed there, they were, yeah, until they were shutting it down, we did. We yeah, life comes and goes, man, it's it, we're not on this earth forever, so. No, it's scary, it's very scary. <clears throat> so we're going to take a look at some max effort bench workout tonight. And um, nothing too exciting. Um, we'll check it out later. Uh, we'll look at speed bench. A lot of videos here to show. And uh, we'll talk a little bit when we get to the chat box. So you don't have to listen to us talk right now. Let me put on uh, these uh, awesome 99 cent store. Now I can see. And it matches my outfit. You're wearing glasses too. Don't look at me funny. All right. <clears throat> First up. And I'm not going to rush through these. I have a tendency to rush. And uh, I'm going to slow it down just a little bit. I don't, I'm not trying to win a marathon here. Uh, Terry, Big Terry from Greece. Uh, benching in his new, and I believe it's a four or five layer bench band. Looks very ominous and, and cool. Um, the bench band itself weighed in at 4.3 pounds. And uh, he's doing a few lifts in it. And um, we will check that out. I don't need a backing. So let's check it out. Little 375, as oh. you see, he has the inner sleeves rolled up, oh. which I like. That's something we oh, need to do. A nice line. Look at that. That just looked real smooth. Or 40 right here. Looks Elbows like he's looking good in there. Still right on side. one ply there. He hasn't put the, the two ply. Okay. Wow. And he says at the gym, it's hard to get spotters, and I understand that. Yeah. Well, that looks really good, Terry. I told you I thought it looked like he, he was. Like it was a commercial gym, and he just was <clears throat> grabbing whoever he could. I mean, they're doing their. Here's a two ply. I, I wouldn't like the way the handout off of the forearm. So two ply locked up right there, but, but he's handling it. He's still that killing it. Everything looked that was some good lifting, man. I don't know if that's a Russian bench band, Terry. You have to let me know what. Oh, is it? yeah, that's right. He was the one. That I I probably know, and I'm just drawing a blank, but. Yeah, that's an that's an um, impressive uh, piece of material there, yeah. and um, getting He's looking lot of, strong, man. Yeah. Bench bench was looking good. Your lines. I can't imagine Your having all those really plies good. on. Like I bet it's just I bet it just stops with like a thousand pounds. They're not made weak in, like anymore. These yeah. things are like super duty. So. Yeah. Uh, Next up, we have. He's got a nickname, but I I just wrote down his real name. His name is Joshua Baker. We've put him on here before, but he's a strong man. He's a big dude. And he's blasting up one uh, 585 like it's 135. Let me put up this stupid little thing here so you don't have to see us. Joshua Baker. Looks like he kind of pauses it, too. He's about 350, give or take. He makes this look real easy. This is what I want to do. I used to be able to do it. 
Look at that shit. Just like, boom. Whoa, look at that pause. Isn't that nice? I mean, Good job, I mean, Joshua. Shit. That was pretty insane. It's like a smoke That's show. like a five second pause, dude. You yeah, he's tough. I think he does, did it on the incline too uh, recently. Like forever. In one of <laughs> our shows. You have time to be thinking about how long the pause is. I want to be that strong. Impressive, yeah. Very nice lifting, sir. Very nice. Looking very good. Looking strong, Looking dude. As strong as can be. Um, I pulled this one because front squatting. Um, I can't do it. I'm not good at it. I don't know where. But I can't get, like, to hold it. This is as far back as I can get. So, um, can you front squat? I used to be able to when I was younger. Um, not very, not, not very well. well. Well, see, the thing for me is well, like we, it hurts my shoulders and elbows. Like, well, you need a front squat harness, and yeah, but oh, doesn't Chuck Vogelpool, um, his his um item, doesn't he have the does pegs it, here? Does it turn into a I thought it did. Let me, I was trying to visualize the Vogelpool, he calls it, and it you, it's got a long uh protruding where you put weights on it in front of your stomach and walk with it. I just wonder if he had some front squat uh, well, pins. Well, why couldn't you? You bought one for Roger Baker, remember? I don't know if it has. I did. Yeah, I did. Um, but his, like the way his was, it was, was a peg. Yeah. Does a peg come like, off? You could probably squat with that in and of it, but like put weight because you're supposed to yeah. put weight on the front. So you could probably do that. That's true. And squat, I wouldn't be the same as. Or just how much did that uh, harness cost that you bought? Was it like two hundred bucks? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I need one to get one of those. Yeah, anyway, good. here's some various lifters uh, front totally squatting. Um, the lifts you're gonna see, I don't know if I can't remember if they're on the uh, video or not. Um, the first one is we can do kilos or pounds. Raise a hand if you want kilos. Raise your hand if you want pounds. Okay, pounds. So the first one's gonna be five eighty three. The second one's gonna be six oh five. And the third one is 638. And uh, these are front squats right here. What's, what's wrong with really? you? Really? Sorry, Mary. But yeah. I'll just go front ahead. squats right here. Check them out. Nice and deep on that one, son. See, I can't get my wrists wow. up there and bent back like that. I can't do it. That's a good one right there. Of 290 kilo. He's a beast. Yeah, I am not good at that lift. I'm going to be the first one to say. Shit, I'm not I very, I'm not, time, not very like good with a bar on my back. It hurts my shoulders and elbows, like, to get enough weight to actually challenge my, you know, my legs and my lower body. It just, my shoulders and my elbows hurt, just start hurting. And Don't tell, yeah. I, don't I do, hurt. I mean, I do, I, I do them here and there. I, I mean, I always say, oh, I'm going to get really good at these and blah, blah, blah. And then after, like, a couple of weeks, like, my shit's torn up and it's starting to affect my bend. That I'm happens. Like, well, this is dumb. Happens like, to the best of them. So... This yeah. uh, this I want to I want you guys to uh, bring this up in the chat box because it happened to me a week ago when I when I put eight oh five on the bar the night I jumped from three eighty five to six hundred to eight hundred or whatever and it basically it hasn't happened in a long time and we think it's because the bar um, was a little bit more forward right here than it should be and it did the motorcycle thing on me a little bit just a little bit with that eight hundred it kind of freaked me out. Well, we see it right here in this particular lift, and it's uh, it dumps forward. It, the bar, unfortunately, does drop on this person, but person was all right, so I'm not worried about, um, you know, uh, posting this. Um, but it's still dangerous as it may be. It's just I want to know why this happens. And, and uh, let's check this out. It's a, it's a wrist dumping forward on the bench. That's what I have written down. And this is something I, I recently have done. No wrist straps, and it kind of comes up in the motorcycle thing. Boing. Yeah. Oh my god, I wasn't expecting that. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, that happens. Oh my god, I was, was not expecting that. Is that is that from not squeezing the bar or is that from the bar being too close to the edge of the palm? Oh, um, no, both. It right? I don't know. It right? happened to me like last week or whatever. And I You dropped it? No, when I was benching it, the first time it came up, it, it kind of did this, and I was like, what the fuck was that? And then Hein said bring it down to a double. So I brought it down and I came up again and it kind of went and that freaked me out, man. And I don't know what caused that. I turned around, I asked Heinz, he thought it was because the bar may have been out here a little too far. It could be right, I don't know. But uh, usually, you know, um, the bar bending your wrist back, we see a lot of when people bench, right. you know, but th I don't know why that happened. I'm sure there's a theory and a whole story behind it. Maybe we'll figure it out. You didn't break your wrist, man. No, not yet. I'm still doing good. Or I guess, not. I mean, I don't know how bad yours was, but. That, I wonder how bad that kid got hurt. It looked like a woman. They didn't catch it. Yeah, I think it was a woman. Yeah, that's a sternum breaker, oh, actually. But uh, 
<clears throat> anyway, next up, we have uh, Jen Thompson benching 320 pounds on her 50th oh, birthday. Man. Her and 50 she's my weight class. This birthday. Like, this is her lift. My weight class. She, she's been benching this. Like, it's just, she could wake up half asleep and do it with, with one arm. And uh, so, anyway, it's her 50th birthday, and she's putting up some 320 action here. Let's check out uh, Jen Thompson here. It's kind of cool. She weighs 132 ish. Yeah. Yeah. I think. 50 years young and uh pressurizing. Would have been 320. Oh, she's 144. Is that a fate bar with the flag on it? Or I've never seen a bar like that. Oh no, it's freaking cool. Though. It's really cool. So this is everyday business for Jen Thompson. I know. All day. She says, All day she does raw. That. Just just yeah. in case you guys aren't clear, she's raw. That's there's no shirt under there. Great job, there's Jen no Thompson. That is 110% raw. And she is no belt, no wrap, huh? I mean, I guess that one said 144, but generally she weighs, I mean, she does that at 132. Like, she's amazing. Next next up. She's we, the best. <clears throat> I'm she's losing my voice. I'm going to be raspy for this thing is done. We, uh, yeah, up here, we had, cut me off. we had a lot of um, forest fires up here the past week. And air quality has been hazardous, and uh, yeah, just they, being out there, it's 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 been bad, like smoke. Yeah, so they were doing school, um, you couldn't have recess, day. or could you? Well, we're not in school no. yet, but once we are, like, you wouldn't let kids go out. Not when the weather advisory is dangerous. They say those particles can get in your bloodstream. I don't know. I maybe I, they're trying I to think kill us. We'll have to have. I'm not sure, but I think they'll have to have indoor recess at the very least they'll have to keep the kids with yeah in my day recess. if you don't have recess you gotta have recess you look forward to that yeah i mean we give them <clears throat> indoor recess and let them play but i mean i know it's not the yeah. thing okay next up i believe this is aj roberts and it looks like one rip max now i pulled this video from instagram and then aj sent me a link of it and i was like oh i, th I was correct it is aj roberts he's doing uh reverse grip floor press and actually we do some reverse grip on our one of our days we do so and uh he's doing it with 400 pounds and chain and uh, he's using the talon grip now we tried the talon grip but i've seen very other people you know the, the bar going through your uh pointer finger and middle finger is what we did now i've seen people do the go through the middle finger that's is that wrong I saw a guy do that I on mean, the internet. They can get away with it, and they're benching a lot, but I can't imagine. No, like, I can't either. Can you? So let's check out this reverse you grip floor press. We, we didn't try it. We thought we just went through the middle finger or the between the pointer and middle. It felt really good. Felt better than a normal grip like that. So let's check out this reverse grip floor press. Do I need a backing? It says a big B on it. I guess that means this thing. Uh, reverse grip got all the chains on there. This, this looks like fun. I think we'll add this to our repertoire as an assistant movement or something it is about 400 at the top give or take and he's uh got it running through his uh middle and pointer right ashley um, yeah he... once you find once you once you get it in there and find that sweet spot like it's pretty easy the pointer in the middle yes. yeah i think so okay i think wait but is i know it looks weird god i can't <laughs> Or he's going to be off pretty soon, so you better be able to tell. Cause, yeah, I guess that's right, because he had this three he had three fingers on the... Yeah. Good, good job, AJ. That was hard to... Oh. We yeah, hope we see goodness. you at our meet, too. I'm looking forward. Yes, we are looking forward to hopefully seeing you there. Not spreading any rumors, since yeah. we don't know for sure, but we are hoping, and if we are looking forward to it, that being a possibility, because it would be awesome to see to see you guys you and uh one rep be awesome to have you guys both there well this guy got a, a million views on instagram and so i thought i'd click on it and his name is T tyson riddenauer so i'm gonna say ridden out ridden sorry um uh, mr tyson I, I did my best he's 21 years old um he's doing 1055 for reps i believe it's on the deadlift he's training to beat eddie hall's 1102 with 1105 so let's check out um tyson i know he's on here somewhere i got his name i saw it right here so yeah he's wearing straps he's not uh, a giant man like 300 pounder i did see his body weight somewhere i want to say it was 
220. I might be wrong on the 220. I don't know. But it, this is pretty damn impressive. So he's on a mission to uh, go for Eddie Hall's 1102. More power to him. Wait, Eddie Hall's? Yeah, 1102. He's in tra he wants to do 1105 is what it says. I Before, thought Thor. Or Thor. Who's got it? I thought Thor had it with the 11. I thought Eddie's was low. 11? I can't remember what Eddie's. I just copied what they had there, and they were it was Eddie Hall, and they wanted that. Maybe that was an old I might video. I wrong. Maybe it was an old video. Maybe, you know, I... But it was cool. It was a lot of weight to deadlift with straps. And, and like I said, it was his body weight's in the low mid 220s, somewhere in there. <clears throat> anyway, this one here has probably been posted before. And it's just impressive because when I saw this particular lift by Julius Maddox, I thought for sure that the next lift he would do would be 800. And it was there. <clears throat> this is one of those meets where, um, but later on, there was word that uh, he felt something in his pec. And so he didn't take any uh, further lifts. And that's smart. That's called listening to your body. Strong. Anyway, Julius Maddox here is doing seven. It's between 781 and 83. It was like 355 kilo or something. And uh, this is a bench press world record, but it's just a beautiful lift. And um, it just goes to show that that 800 was, I think it was there this day. I really do. I mean, 783. I really thought it was here on this day. Like, son, speed Jeez. rap. Wow. Come on, right? That's impressive, man. I, I am it's the bench monster, pretty, so I, I got I to gotta showcase easy. that. Yep. But there's speed behind that. Strong. And oh, he, yeah. I mean, empty barbell. So you know how I look at it. 783, and you want to do 800 next. That's like what? Two, 10 uh, on each? Yeah, uh, 10 on each side. A five, a five, and a chip or something? A couple chips? So a 10 on each side. And oh, I don't want to think that. <laughs> why oh uh, yeah um well what i'm saying is i mean it's not very much right yeah but so if you held a 10 and a two and a half and that's all although it'd be it'd be like it's, two of them I, wanna, still, I, I mean, think that was a second attempt I, I i think he looked really fresh too but um you, know, you got to be safe safety first you know and, and yeah. if uh, his if pack was hurt, twang, none of it matters none of it matters and, and you're out for a long time so right um this is a. Uh, I left the audio on on this. This was a oops moment. It was a tiny technical uh, lifting issue that occurred here. And we'll take a look at that. Um, do I have it on here? Yeah, oopsie is what I called it. So we'll have to listen. Okay, okay. Oh, shit. Oopsie, that's uh, not good. Did he black out? Huh? Hey, shit happens, man. You yeah, know, but you never know when. It's just, it's just, a, yeah, it is. It's weird. Trips you out. Yeah, that looked horrifying. It, yeah, he went back on his head. Yeah. Jesus, that criminy. Really terrifying. Um, next up, we have Chris Logman. Um, he's back in action uh, and doing some great things. And I believe he's wearing a shirt that is. Uh, I think it was made for his dad. He doesn't have his own shirt. And he's just uh, took a hand-me-down, and he's doing some awesome lifts. And he's doing 505 for two. And uh, I believe Chris, 275, 280 body weight, maybe maybe less. Uh, we'll check this out right here. It's a 505 for two, full range, and a two-ply F8 uh, at 17 years old. Needs 435 to set a IPA world record at the 16 to 17 age bracket. So let's check out Chris Logman. I believe he's in here somewhere. Uh, he's right up to that. I probably need a, does Chris need a backing? Yes, he does. And we'll just pick up Chris Logman right here. <clears throat> 505 for two. Getting that shirt down. He had just uh, never wore that shirt in his life and started wearing it about three weeks ago. Wow. Look at him spread that bar. Cheesy. Oh, oh he's got a lot Jeez. more in the tank, too. We got to get him a singlet, and we got to get him uh, to the October meet here. No question. Yeah. And I believe he's doing that. <clears throat> His uh, younger him. brother. Good to see him. Curtis. Is he, comp is he competing? I believe so. Nice. His younger brother, boy. Curtis, is hitting a 145 on a half board. Now, these young, young bucks are coming up fast, too. Every time you see them, they're putting more weight on the bar and doing more great things. So this is an impressive uh, strength family here, coached by their dad, Dan Logman. 
And uh, let's check out this, uh, this 145 off a half board here. I believe I have it on here, Curtis Logman. It's leaps and bounds when you're young. The gains are just, they just come every, every other day, man. It's so good to be young and strong. Mm -hmm. And they got so many, you know, awesome years ahead when they keep, uh, keep fo focusing on what they're doing. It's going to be a sight to see. World yeah. champions in the making. Paul Lawfer. How you doing, Paul? Uh, seven, he's doing a 775. That's right. 775 to a two board in his new F fate shirt, uh, 50 pound PR post-surgery or a post-surgery PR. However you want to say it. 775. Yeah. I had, I'm, I'm dyslexic for a second. So okay. let's check out uh, Paul, Mr. Paul, and uh, let's check out this new shirt. I didn't want to zoom in too much because it kind of made it blurry. So I kind of had to chop it here. That shirt's looking good. It's got the brand new scent. Let's see here. <clears throat> Hopefully you have to assist him by putting an arm out. Oh, that's good. There we go. There we go. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that shirt's loaded already. That's all the way to the top right there. 775. Everything looks tight. Everything looks good. Damn, son. Some weight on that bar. Look easy cheesy all day long. Very good, Paul. Take it like a bazillion reps there, Paul. That looks really good. 50 pound PR. That's good. Since it's surgery. Really That's awesome. 50 pounds. Next up, we have Mary Askew. PR. That's amazing. Or is it? Askew? What's, she had another name posted. Mary P. Ponza. Ponza, yeah. I that's her. I assume that that was her... Um... Maiden. Maiden name. Okay, Ponza or Askew. I don't know what I'm doing here. Yeah, I'm Mary Askew. <clears throat> so she's cutting for a bodybuilding show. She's down to 140 pounds. Decided to step in there and do some deadlifting. And I believe she does 300 for a set of uh, 10 reps. So let's check that out. Do I need a backing? Yes, I do. Let's check out Mary here real quick. Haha, deadlift. As she knows, I mean, when you drop body weight, you know, strength kind of goes with it. And and she maintains some right here, 300 for some reps. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I think she's doing a bodybuilding show next year. Got plenty of time to pre plan and prep for it. Looking stronger than ever. Yes, she is. That's awesome. No issues there. Yeah. All day. <laughs> Boom! Way to go, Mary! Good. Kicking ass and taking names. Speed. Awesome to see you deadlifting, Miss Mary. That's impressive. Yeah, I like it. She talked about putting on a shirt, maybe um, sometime soon, also, and testing the waters there. Oh, really? Have yeah. you talked to her recently? Email. Okay. Yeah. Nice, nice. Uh, cool. Next up, we have Roger Brome. Very cool. And he's doing a two board press awesome in his see, Mary. single ply that to us. evil twin, hitting four thirty five. He's also down 27 pounds, doing a weight cut. So 27 pounds is quite a bit of weight to lose and uh, still be strong. But what I like is his shirt that he's wearing is absolutely painted on him. I mean, I can't tell he's lost any weight. The shirt is just conformed to his body. It looks very good. And let's check out this two-board press here, uh, Roger Broman. I don't need a backing. Look how skin tight that thing is. I love that shirt. Well, you got to put more weight on the bar there. That's very easy, Roger. Simple. I yeah, like that, that shirt, man. Easy. Very tight that shirt. Nice and, yeah, I know. That looks great. Looking good. Very impressive. Dimitro sent to me a video. We love love you, Dimitro. So what Dimitro's doing here, he's love breaking Dimitro. in a new custom Fate shirt. It's a triple ply, and he's doing an easy 605 off a three board. Uh, brand new shirt. Fate. Let's check that out. Do I need a backing? No, he's got a video that I can work with. Let's check out Dimitro here. We were talking a little bit on, on uh, email about breaking this shirt in, working the boards down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
He's got perfect form. Doesn't raise his head like I do. Keeps it back. Form on point. Oh, he got it to touch. Way to go. Getting that thing warmed up. Awesome. Good job, Dimitro. Shit. That's great. Maybe two more next week or a deload or however you do yeah, it, man. This looks great, man. Nice Got a lot of a lot of uh, videos from you coming up here. Name. So you're gonna have to talk yourself, talk to fans and crew here through what we got to do here. You're up with a squat first. You care to? I'm supposed to follow all those lifts, man. Yeah. Yes, you are. You're such great, strong lifting. Let's check out your squat right here. Shit. And it, oh, it needs a backing. Shit. The others don't need a backing, but this one does. Okay, I'm there, but I don't know what I'm doing. Was it spotting? This might have been this last Saturday, maybe. So let's see what I'm doing here. I've got at least three plates up there, right? Or no? Oh no, I guess I don't. Two plates, quarter, five. It's three hundred. Three hundred. Two and a half. I don't know. What I? I can't even. No, it's two eighty-five. No. <laughs> I can't remember when this one's from. What's those shoes that it's you're wearing? Are those chucks? They're chucks, yeah. They're animal print chucks. Okay. Cheetah print chucks. Cheetah print chucks. Yep. Like, like your underwear. What underwear? Oh. <laughs> All right. Next up, Ash next deadlift. One. We have three deadlifts. Deadlift. I didn't put them in any oh, particular order. Oh, and no bench. Started. No bench came to me. I meant to, me. to put a bench. Here's your deadlift. Looks like a lot of weight to me. Is that smoke in the gym? Kind of glo gloomy. I don't know. I don't think it's smoke. Although, I mean, I don't know. It could get smoky in there if they're opening the, the door know, back and forth. Yeah. The door. <clears throat> so this what do you do? Three seventy is just some light singles. I'm just kind of getting my back kind of used. You know. Get, Kind of get letting my back feel a little bit more weight. Well, not, yeah. You know, not, I don't want to do too much, like too quick. I'm just kind of like slowly letting. How's it feeling when you deadlift? Does it hurt or does it hurt after? Um, it kind of depends on the day sometimes. I mean, usually I can feel it during. Some days are worse than others. Um, and then sometimes it feels like worse out to today. I felt it a little bit like it's not like a sharp pain. It's not like it's more of a I can feel like that it's very tight and I can feel all the pressure like going right um, right to that area. Right. Um, <clears throat> uh, you know, off off the ground, I can I can really feel it. But okay. it's, it's, I'm, I'm at least you're, able you're working to through do, it, you know, do some stuff. I don't think i'm making it a whole lot worse I, I mean there are some days where i might like push it a little more than i should and and it lets me know right away but yeah okay it's, it's, here's another deadlift by kind you of both would be my answer is you... sometimes i feel it during sometimes it's after sometimes it's not well let's right. walk us through this one here looks like you're standing on some wood yeah and i'm fat as hell <laughs> man i don't know what's going on there people it's, i think i don't know i'm embarrassed don't look at me just look at ashley <laughs> so this isn't anything impressive or yeah anything. it is it's just just a deficit pull um again you know nothing crazy nothing i mean i usually work up to that without a belt i mean you, before but, my back was a problem i would work up to that weight and on a deficit with no belt before I'd even start putting a belt on. And then I'd work up higher on the deficit before I took the deficit away for my like working sets. Um, so, you know, not, not, I'm not suited, but I'm not, not impressed, but I'm, hey, it's a work in progress. Be, yeah, I'm glad to be moving the right direction. Forward, yeah, you're, you know? you're not going backwards. I you feel want, like I'm moving but, the right direction. Yeah just slowly and i'm grateful that i'm still able to do it do any of it and that i'm able to squat um, yeah what if your back hurts so bad you couldn't do I any mean, of that because I, I have i went i've went through periods where like i know that it's super not safe like where i you know barely deadlift where i have to either find the other variations of the deadlift or you know where i really can't do much they don't so piss I'm, it off yeah i'm grateful that i'm at least able to um you know do some 
do some weight and continue doing those lifts. You know, like on squat, I'm still able to work um, in the, you know, 300 range. Right. About, you know, a little bit above that when I put the knee wraps on because those kind of take the pressure off of the back, you know, what the back's having to do too. And um, deadlift, you know, same thing, and you know, able to work up. To I don't like the fact that you're benching or... with your feet up all the time. I mean, why? Because are you going to bench in a meet sometime? Hmm? Not for a while. Oh, okay. I mean, I can't even hold together. I think I know you can't. What's put... happening in a meet is not really <laughs> okay. Well, let's check out your deadlift really... number three. Let's go on here. What are we doing? I know there's right. no there's this was this was today. Was it really? Yeah. So this was 340 for for triples. Let's check this out. 340 for triples. Yeah, nothing super impressive, but just grinding. I can see you going through your cues in your mind right there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I totally am. Hmm. Because you know, I'm like thinking about technique, my technique rules. Yeah. In my back pocket and bending the bar. Those look awesome. Sitting back. Thank you. Thanks, girl. Jim wasn't that busy, was it? Uh, not at that time, but that was like when I first got there. So that was like two thirty. When, when you left at five, something is packed. Two thirty, and then by the time I left around five five thirty or so. Busy was, time. Getting pretty busy. Yeah. Okay. I mean, for our gym, you know, it's busy for our gym. <clears throat> We're gonna move. So. Yeah. Excuse me. We're gonna move into speed bench. I don't know what we did. I can't remember. I got Alzheimer's here. It seems like these workouts are just one day after another. And they are. They practically are. So close oh, no. together. Um, let's check out Speed Bench together. Yeah. Well, I'm starting with three plates. Just some three plate action. Um, do most of that bodybuilding routine now. A little bit more heavier weight, not maxing out per se, but seems to be uh, making progress for people. So let's try it out. Got a few guys doing spoto presses, and I believe uh, we do. We incorporate some of those in our lifts somewhere up here. So we got Starrett here with three plates and a 10. He's gonna spoto press those. He pushes in a straight line. It's awesome to see. Nothing wrong with that. Oh, one more he says. Little competition going on here. Uh, <clears throat> incline rolling dumbbells. I always advise people to start with uh, some lighter weight, get the rhythm down, get the blood in there, get the right speed and tempo going. Good control. And uh, there's multiple sets there. As you see, I'm sweating. That means we're working hard, short rest periods here. I don't know what Heinz is doing over there. He should be over here doing this workout. Hmm. Anyway, so we got uh, two of these going at the same time. And then a uh, little uh, skull crusher here on the Smith machine. Nothing exciting. Just doing things that work, trying to find apparatuses and angles and different types of resistance and uh, get in there and do it. <clears throat> Sometimes I just roll the dice on assistance work, but now I ask the other guys, excuse me, <clears throat> I said, what do you guys want to do? And they got to think on the spot and don't tell me a push down. This is, this is rather light, but you know, we're trying to do it smooth and controlled, flexing somewhat at the top. Mind and muscle connection right there. I'm thinking about the triceps growing with each press. 
Lions doing a plate and a quarter. That's what I like to see. His raw bench is really coming along, too. This is hard work, people. Looks like I'm going to get in right behind him. Why cut the, the video here? Just swoop right in. For some reason, this was making me grit my teeth here. Had to actually put a little gunpowder in it there. I was like, it's not going to go up easy, and I got to explode somewhat, so... There we go. Uh, looks like a rope push down, something simple. We save our shoulder work for the following workout on Tuesday. I'm kind of turning those ropes out at the bottom, putting a little flex on those tricep heads. That's how I do it. Well, good to have you back, Miss Ashley. Anywhere. Oh, you didn't go anywhere. Okay. Max effort bench. Now, just to warn you, there's not a lot of exciting big lifts that occurred this night. It was basically we were going to do decline. I prefer to bring in um, a single ply atlas, which I've had for, well, since 2014. And um, it's an XXL single ply, and I have an XL. So I grabbed the big one out because I, you know, I'm going to do raw or whatever, but I also want to take a little step further and, and handle just a tad, a tad bit more weight. So let's check out Max Effort and I'll walk you through it. All right, looks like a little decline. We'll skip one plate, two plate, and go right to three plates. I don't like this decline bench because as you see, it's really wide at your ass. And as you go up, it's like a popsicle stick. So there's not a lot of um, purchasing, purchase on the uh, upper back up there. Purchasing. Purchasing. <laughs> yeah, that's the wrong word. Um, <laughs> that the wrong word. Stare okay. it right here on the so decline, anywhere. straight line. Love that. Three plates and a quarter. Jose, four plates here. Jose claimed he got hurt here somewhere. I don't know what video it is, but... That's what he said, twanged his shoulder or something. Four plates and a 10, stare it. This is my guy right here. This guy's came a long way. Great addition to the team. Yeah, a little butt action there when it got hard, that's all right. Hines here, four plates. Keep the butt down now. Good line. Um, 405 for me. I did it once prior, and I took it high, so I moved the bench back where I went way out there, and it felt a little better. So I don't really want to do reps. I just didn't feel I had that kind of power to cut my carbs a little. Oh! Starrett had a little uh, weird wiggle move there, but kind of settled down, then he got it together. Yeah, got it figured out there. Hines, four plates and a quarter. Butt down, please. Mm. Uh, I see some daylight there, but anyway, he got two. See, I don't have that that decline very high. It's, it's almost uh, slightly flat. Throw on that little single ply. Did four play, no, five plates real quick. And then I did a drop set, 315. Drop set till failure, basically. Uh, 495 for Heinz. Ass down. Oh, my God. That's all right. <laughs> I can't see that when I, I'm handing off. Like, I mean, I'm kind of... Here we are at the uh, reverse bench. bench. Here is the Anthony Clark method. Just the whole hand, you know, twisted around. That felt really good. Not really. Mm -hmm. I have uh, no mobility, so. And then, uh, of course, we went to, we, I figured three plates was was a good work set. You know, five reps or whatever. Don't want to be too peppered for uh, tomorrow's workout, but I think we will be. 
So then we go to the uh, the claw grip, talon grip. No, not yet. Not yet. Not 315. It feels real comfortable doing a reverse grip bench. I really like that. Derek uh, getting here on the action, 315. <clears throat> Looks like he's been doing it all his life. Good job, Starrett. Okay, now are we, yeah, now we're doing the grip through the, between the pointer and the middle finger. And so I'm, I can't really turn over my hand, so it's a son of a bitch, but I do the best I can. And uh, here we go, talon grip. That really, it really felt good in my hands right here. I like that. It sits in a little valley in your palm. It, it feels awesome. So, <laughs> excuse you. Sorry. A lot of people at the gym we couldn't even do seated presses or overhead because all the racks were taken. So we had to come over to this machine. This is closer to seven o'clock, and it's getting getting a lot of uh, regular, normal people in there. You know how it goes, people. Uh, we did two plates and two plates and a quarter. Got to do shoulders. Got to do it. Got to incorporate it somewhere. There's two plates and a quarter. I think somebody lowered the seat because I think that should be coming down a little further. If we raised the seat, it'd be more of a full range of motion, I believe. Since we had the decline sitting over there and uh, not a lot of things to do, we decided to pick up the football bar and do some extensions. We started with a quarter, then we went to a plate. I figured you wouldn't want to see the quarter. Minimal volume here, eight reps, four sets, something like that. I love the curvature of this bar. It just fits right between your uh, eyes perfectly. And that's where I bring it. So I'm putting a little firepower into that. Uh, reverse push downs, why not? Those are not really how you do it. Kind of need to bring the elbows in uh, closer to the apparatus, but I think it still works. Pretty lightweight there. We did, uh, we did, we racked the whole thing, but I was just uh, showcasing our last exercise of the night, which in my opinion is kind of boring. We just uh, suck a little bit what's left out of the triceps before we leave. Heinz is going to go here and, uh, and, and that was that night. I think we're due for some shirt lifting next week. I was uh, kind of impressed that I haven't put on a shirt in three weeks. And when I did a week ago or whatever. Uh, yeah. I think putting the shirt on for me every third week is the best. Ticket. Yeah. I think just it's just for me because I don't know. I got to find out what works for me. Not what works for him or him. I got to do what works for me. So. That felt really good. I think going in the shirt all the time is just beating me down to the ground. Well, all right. Start at the top, Ashley. You're in charge. I know all nothing. Right. Okay. We've got Harriet Conjugate Iron here first. What's up, guys? Getting some precious sleep. Went heavy on both squat and bench this week. Body is shutting down. LOL. Yeah, Hope been... you're doing all right. Hopefully, I'll catch you live next week. Yeah. Oh, okay. I got what he's saying here. Good hear, so hearing he's from saying, you, Carrie. saying hi, but he's going to get some sleep. That that's Sleep is one of the most important things. It is. For, you know, especially for recovery. So Good. thank you for uh, checking in and saying hi, Terry. We're really glad that you're able to to get some sleep, to prioritize that and, and, and make sure you're getting some sleep. Good job on your lift and your new bench band too. Say that that thing looks really aggressive good. and mean, and I think that's going to take you to levels that you need to go at. Just make sure you have proper spotters and stuff. I know it's hard to find at that commercial gym, but uh, remember safety. You don't come down and let that thing shoot it back over your face or something. Make sure you got some side spotters that can uh, be there for you. Don't want to see anybody get hurt. No, All right. no that's the last thing we want to see for sure for sure 
Um, Mary Askew. Hey, Mary. Hi, guys. Hope you are all well. I changed who will be the beneficiary beneficiary of our meat slash fundraiser in Oregon. Ho Homana, Homana. Ho Homana. That's basically what I. Said. I know barbell in Maui. In Maui, ooh, a lot of bad things been going on over there. Taking care of displaced locals from the fire. I contacted their owner, Jody Sager. Sager, I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure if you pronounce the J in the in the J. I'm not sure if you pronounce the J. I'm not either. Sager, Sager, Sager. So I apologize. I know I'm probably butchering that, but Jody, Jody, the owner, she is beyond grateful to receive any help we can send her way. That are giving shelter, meals, showers, etc., to displaced fire victims. Well, that's very kind. Of... A lot of people die. Uh, the, the body counts up to a hundred over there. It's pretty, it's, pretty tragic. What's going on over scary. there? Very, yeah, it's heart, heartbreaking. Mm. So, um, so a thank you to Jody for doing everything that she can to, um, to support those victims. Yeah. and it's and to Mary for setting up um what sounds like um more support sounds like a way of um raising, raising everybody some money to, for, yeah, for, for, for all of us to kind of pitch in and victims of the fire out there yeah um because yeah i'm so I, i'm if i'm understanding it right that's i assume gonna be like our our meat's gonna be Am yeah, I understanding right. I'm afraid. Well, to when say I, what I what I get out of it is, yeah, though it's going to be a fundraiser. Yeah, so, so, so part so, of our so much of the proceeds are going to go back to uh, Maui to um to help to help. What yeah, she's... we're down for that. That's awesome. That yeah. sounds great. So thank you, Mary, for setting that up. That's amazing. Yeah, always thinking of ways that she can help um help the community and other people in general. So awesome to Mary, and again, this this lady Jody, the owner, um sounds like an amazing person you know um helping helping the victims um of of the fires so thank you to you you two lovely women you guys are amazing um did you did you okay paul I, I, paul I gotcha paul offer hey paul hey guys how's it going going good going paul. pretty good paul thanks for joining us Hope you're doing well also. Hope Christina is still doing well as well. Great lift in your new shirt too, Paul. Yeah, it's looking solid. Looking pretty darn solid. Um, living on a prayer. So, so I have a question. Ever eat tons of calories and your bar your body parts go numb? when you're sleeping no my arms legs and everything i could feel well let's see um my arms legs and everything i couldn't feel anything unless i got up and walked around huh that's interesting i wonder what's causing that um yeah if your whole body's numb you might want to have your heart yeah, checked if out that continues you might want to um go to the doctor and kind of uh, let's see. He had another living on a prayer. When I stopped eating carbs, is when my numbness at night stopped almost completely. But it took a few months. Weird, huh? Yeah, never heard of that. Oh. If Mike Lupacek meatball was here, he would have an answer for you. Ever eat since? Okay, so that makes more sense. And believe me, I've eaten tons of calories, like fifteen thousand. Okay. And I had no problems. The only problem was is wishing more there were more hours in the day so I could consume 20,000 calories in a day instead of 15. That's eating every hour and a half. All right. Where are we at? Howard um, Weingarten. Let's see here. Okay, so yeah, I did the living on the prayer. Yeah, that is. The numbness continues. Um, you definitely might get that checked out. Sure. Howard Weingarten. There. 
Yes, there is a harness that's called a Zercher squat harness, and you can find them for about a hundred bucks. Yeah, see, I got one probably what seven or eight years ago. You got what? Uh, front squat harness. Yep. Um. Yeah, I mean, might let me called write that down. I can't see it. Harness. I can't see it. What, what, what what's he calling it? A Zercher harness. Zercher harness, or is that what he's actually called? I, I, I can see it a little bit. A Zercher squat harness. Zercher squat harness. I think it'd be good good to have one of those in the gym. Yeah. Yeah. We used to. Yeah, the one that we got, um, I think I think I paid $200 for it. So it okay. sounds like maybe the price of them are coming down now that they're... Nothing is coming down. Everything is going up in price. Well, if that's being sold for a hundred bucks, it's right two hundred now. It was two hundred before. It's three hundred. So t- <laughs> no, he's telling I know. you. I'm just making fun of things. All right. That's hilarious. Brennan Eason, what's he saying? Brennan Eason, hello Ryan from South Georgia. Georgia, down by Florida, Georgia. Panhandle. Place I used to live, Florida. A way cooler place. Than... Way cooler than here. <laughs> okay. Um. Roger Brom. Roger Brom. Yes. Yes, guys. Wait. Hmm? Oh, but I was on the wrong spot. Sorry. We're right. Don't I touch the screen. No, I'm not there. Look. Where am I? I got the cursor on it. Do you see that? Roger Brome. Roger Brome. I use my wrist straps and dark side gear elbow cuffs when front squatting. Oh. Oh, the, the elbow, the elbow cuffs. cuffs. That's hmm. a good thing. Because I, I do use the wrist strap, wrist straps, and that does help. But I've never thought about using the elbow cuffs. That might not be I need the apparatus where it just sits right here on two, two, uh, two prongs. Then I can squat. I, I, cannot get, I cannot do this thing that we saw earlier. I am not flexible enough. Maybe we can get in on what we have. Anyways. Or the, that we had. Uh, Howard Weingarten, right here. Howard Weingarten. Both. That's what happened to me at Mendy's. I had it happen because someone yelled, Knuckles. Oh. Up. Knuckles up. And the motorcycle happened so you were kind of slightly bent back and they said knuckles up you went like this and it just went Oops. that's scary that's I, I can see I, that makes a lot of sense howard thank you i don't know why i call it the motorcycle thing you know i it's like you're revving them i just made that well, word it up makes sense. Yeah. i mean i know exactly what you mean i can put and I it's scary when you say it because when it happens i mean when it when it goes it you, you you're not gonna you're wrist roll back probably gonna be seven scared. plus yeah. <laughs> oh Okay, yeah, be careful, folks. It's very scary. Do not try to roll with. Okay, anyways. Living on a prayer. I don't know who that person is, but you got another question here. Wait, wait. What about? Okay, okay. Never mind about that. Living on a prayer. <coughs> oh. Do you forget I can see in the monitor when you roll your eyes? I, t- I had something looks. in my eye before the show started. Here, I... let me get it out. No. I, I went in and tried to get it out, and it's bothering me, so I don't know Okay, what... well, let me get it for you. Keep those dirty hands away from me. They're not. I cleaned them. Oh, good. Mm. All right. Okay. Uh, living on a prayer. Living on a prayer. I think drinking boosts... I think drinking boosts with my meals which has tons of sugar, may have caused the numbness reaction sleeping at night. Huh. I don't know, you think? Not a nutritionist, or, nor a doctor, I mean, or like, a naturopathic doctor. I don't so. know a whole lot about, about that kind of, I mean. I don't either. But I wouldn't want to be numb. Like, that's not a good thing. Have you tried, like. Maybe he's got that celiac thing or something. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just shooting out things that I. Yeah, I'm I've not, never heard I'm of this before. Sure. Well, I mean, if the numbness continues, that's probably something I would have like. Yeah, you talk to a doctor. Going to the doctor for. Call offer. I know we we all would like to avoid the doctor wherever we can. I'm like notorious for waiting as long as I can to go to the doctor. I mean, I've had problems with my eyes since like 
May. They started pouring water in May. And you're still dealing with it. And I'm still dealing. But I, I did finally go to the doctor once it got to the point where I woke up and one of them was stuck shut. Um, that's when I, I finally decided to go on. But I usually wait till I like really can't wait any longer um, to go. So I get it. But if the numbness thing continues, you definitely want to get that looked at and see if you can get answers. And if not, you know, find a another another place to go and see if you can get another opinion. But definitely, it, if it continues, get it checked out because anything with numbness is not normal. Is scary and you know not normal. Uh, I'll offer. You, you've got the thing on. Hmm. What thing on? Oh no! I got it right here where you're supposed to be. I'm trying no, to help you're you. Right. Okay. Paul Paul Laffer. Not not for not for sure if 800 is coming at my next meet, but it will be here soon. My CNS was fried Tuesday night. I plan to uh, attempting I plan on attempting 800 in the gym soon. That yeah, don't no, well don't like think there's plan, don't yeah. think there's pressure upon you to do any specific number. Just go out there and do your best. Yeah. Get on the board and then go from there. It's one lift at a time. Yeah, Eight hundred will come when it's ready. You know, don't don't set that that uh, mental yeah, block. Don't get too yeah, stuck just on take it. one lift at a time, man. It'll it'll come. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, let's see here. Howard Wine Garden. Howard Wine Garden. How? You want me to read it? How are you two doing? Sorry, no new videos from me lately. My regular gym is relocating to a oh. new town close to my closer to me. So I've been going between there and a gym about an hour from. Dang it. Do you want me to read Ashley? No, I don't. Because you're not your is relocating to a new town closer to me so i've been going between there and a gym about an hour away so soon hopefully yeah okay yeah yeah no worries i mean once you can get some videos we look forward and love to see them but don't that's good don't that they're moving closer to you, you too. yep nope that's awesome that your gym is relocating closer to where you're at it's really nice to have a gym so close we love having we love the location of ours it's so close i mean it takes two to three minutes yeah. to get there so no nope, that is good news for you and we'll look forward to whenever you can send us videos but no worries alden alden hi ryan hi ashley nice to see you guys li on live ryan how important is gpp and can you give a basic rundown on how to have great conditioning in the gym well like pulling the sled is uh is great for gpp we don't do that anymore and actually our speed bench when we used to do it with a 30 to 40 second rest and we, we used to run fast that helped also um it, it definitely builds conditioning and um it's something i seriously lack in right now i was going to break out the sled when it was 109 degrees out and bring it to the gym it was a Tuesday. It was going to be the hottest day of the year here, 109. I thought, let's go out and pull that thing. I don't want to give anybody a heat stroke or nothothing, but uh, yeah, no, it's yeah. very, very important. And that's the two ways that I trained it. I mean, I don't do hit training or nothing, but I'll pull the sled frontwards, backwards. Sometimes we uh, we'll do the, the Frankenstein walk with it. We'll put a chain and then oh, two yeah, uh, handles and walk right. with it like this. And I used to really like uh, then let, let it pull you back and then push it forward. Let it pull it back. Things. Walk with it backwards and uh increase that uh, that conditioning so gpp is very important and i'm gonna be the first to tell you um in our gym we get f's right now our gpp is piss poor really yeah actually yeah you might you might be correct we used to we used to do gpp exercises like um those battle ropes and we used to do that for, and then the sledgehammer on the tire we had a system oh my god prowler work what else did we do we did prowler the prowler work prowler Oh, yeah. Prowler and the sledgehammer I mean, that and the one, battle rope. We didn't have ourselves. We had a girl that would bring it. Yeah, that trained with us. Try that. Try doing. Um, and when we did the ropes, we would do like 
15 seconds like this, 15 seconds of this way, and then 15 seconds of this, and then go over and swing the sledge for, I mean, that that will kick your ass. But I tell you what, it's very beneficial, period. Yeah, I don't remember how he, like, never mind, disregard. I don't think my guys would like that very much, but I think we need to try it and see what I type of conditioning really we're, we're all really dog. in. Well, I liked all of it, but I really liked doing the arm one at the end, like at the end of. Um, what was the arm one? Well, just upper body stuff. I mean, we would you, we could do we would do pressing. We would do like you said Frankenstein. We would do um, uh, flies. Flies, yeah. We would do. Um, <clears throat> What else did we do? We had several. It's been so long. We had so many of them, and it goes to show we can't remember because we haven't done it in years. <laughs> we do like, did we do where it was like a lateral way, like where they were down here, and then you'd boom, and then walk. I would imagine. Boom. I feel like you remember doing that. Do you remember when we did it? Was that an extra workout, or that, or did that occur after um, a workout? I don't remember. I, <clears throat> I did it at the end of. Work yeah us. i think you guys did too i think we all okay. did it after our bench work. that's a good point you bring up alden because it's something <clears throat> that it's going to plant a seed in my brain and it's something that you, sh you should see on our video soon <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me especially after speed bench i think it'd be good to go outside and, and uh, walk forwards and backwards with uh two three hundred pounds on that sled and um i know i need to and it's just getting off our asses and doing it yeah but thank you for uh, making me re-remember <laughs> shit that we haven't done that we need to be doing. Howard Wine Garden, yeah. last one. No, we totally should. We, is it still? Is the sled still in our rock garden, or is it? No, I picked it up and moved it. I put Where it on the side of the house over here because it was getting all rusty and the stuff. Side of the house. Yeah, put it by my boat. Oh, is it over there? I think so. All right, Reed Howard's last one here. I hope it is. <clears throat> Howard Wine Garden that true that's that's true 700 plus is not is not coming back and i was just thinking not having a very tight wrap and movement of the bar has something to do with it yeah it's always when i tell my guys to wrap their wrists i always say make a fist because that kind of locks everything in and you can try this at home sometime when you, when you make a fist really tight and then tighten down around those tendons and everything in the wrist, and, you, and then, then you uh, let go, your hand will actually stay closed when you try to open it. If you wrap it with it open, you know what happens? It wants to stay open. So that's why you always make a fist. And I always tell my guys, too, they wrap their wrist up to this joint and not a little bit into the palm. So this is, this is what they get. And we don't want that. We don't want this to move. So in order to do that, though, you have to come up a little high right here, just over the... Yeah, th thumb lump there. Yeah, Perhaps so, yeah. Make sure that you, yeah, because you see a lot of people that do it too low and like it does no, you know. No. I mean, if you can fully move it, like it's not. But it, you see that quite often. So just making sure that you got, you know, I'd say half of them. Another point I want to bring up is those lifestyle PR uh, elbow wraps that we got that larry wheels wears now those double as um wrist straps yeah. is what i was told oh that was kind of cool you know i got pretty i got pretty big beefy you know upper forearm and this area here is not very small and um when they do the wrap of that around my elbows it just seems like i'm getting like a, a rev, two revolutions of uh, of that what they need to do is make that thing about a foot longer so guys with yeah. you know big thick arms can get a few one extra wrap right. there's not much to work with there when you got big arms Right. So the other guys on the crew that, I mean, they're able to go around like four times. You know, me, it's one, two, and then a, <clears throat> barely get it. Through, yeah. I just wanted to cry on somebody's shoulder. Thanks for listening. <laughs> What's Alden got to say? Um, Alden. I'm getting in the high 300s for Ben. Awesome. Nice. Very cool. Um, Could you give me a few piece of it, pieces of advice? reviewing for me to continue past 400 i lost my spot wait is, is it the last it's the last one. Oh, it is so for me to continue past 400 i think so much ryan well alden there's a lot of things that i would oh, have to 300s. see um i'd have to see your technique when you bench I, i'm i'll be looking at your feet i'll be looking at whether you're dropping your shoulders and pinching them 
um, where you're grabbing the bar, um, are you breaking the bar, are you engaging the lats, um, you know, so on and so forth. And then we uh, then we look at your uh, your your physical makeup and say, you know, we got to bring always got to bring up the triceps, obviously. But you know, some some we don't want any imbalances in the body, so we want to make sure your shoulders are strong, your upper back is built. Uh, even traps and forearms are, are things that uh, benefit in the bench. I mean, the upper back, you know, is where you, uh, that's where you lay. That's, that's your base. So there's just a lot of things that we, we would need to critique um, to figure out where is, where is the best thing to um, get you to make some progress uh, in the bench press. And then it comes down to training and not doing the same exercises over and over again, expecting a different result and doing things um, a lot of times you know you got to do the things you don't like to do as far as in a workout and um, there's a couple things i don't like to do um but um you know you got to do them do things that are fun i mean that's great but you got to do things that are hard that are um are not going to get uh, heads turning in the gym you know there's um what's that what's that one that we do it's not a, there's one that we uh it's oh, i can't remember what it was Great for the bench, but you can't put a lot of weight on there. It's it's a it's a humbling it's non humbling. What do you call it? I I can't think on the spot. Yeah, there's a few things that we do. Um, but maybe uh, Alden, I, I don't think have I ever gotten a video from you, Alden. If you'd uh, you mind sending me a uh, a video of you know of you benching, and ang if I can get an angle or two and just look at things and uh, we can we can go from there. Um, this is also where you send videos if you want them showcased on Bench Monster TV. Please send them to me at benchmonster at gmail.com. Big fan of uh, rolling dumbbells, of course. Big fan of speed work. I know um, at the level we're at now with these band shirts, we've really found out that speed work um, doesn't really doesn't really help us as much. It, it, it helps uh, raw lifting, of course. I've seen that work. But um, you got to be, you know, you got to be uh, explosive. So uh, you got to push against things like you're being hit with a cattle prod. You know, just like, boom, explosive like that. And big fan of chains and bands and uh, adding resistance to the bar and adding uh, resistance to uh, assistant exercises also, whether it be tri tricep extent. You've see, seen these videos that we put up time and time again. You see all the different tricep stuff we do, and they all work. Um, the point is doing them for a couple of weeks and then switching the exercises. You need to have a list. You need to have a game plan. You got to come in and know what you're doing on that day and not getting in there and think, oh, I think I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to do that. No, you got to have a plan because without a plan, you don't have no attack. And without a no attack, you have victory. And if you don't have victory, you get no Dom Perignon. So you're not saying it right. You used to say, we used to say like the positive version of it, didn't we? I don't know. There's two versions gotta to it. Have a, gotta have it. But um, have yeah, we got to figure out uh, on your, uh, there's a lot of things like on, on technique that, uh, I, I've, I've fixed on people and put 20 pounds on their bench in 20 seconds. So it's um, just a, lo a lot of different things. And then getting the workout right, getting the diet right, getting your lifestyle right. I don't know if you're out drinking beer on, only on Friday and Saturdays. You know, I don't know. There's all kinds of things that we, uh, you know, need to demolish to get to where we need to be. And 400 is just like a step. I mean, then there's 500. So uh, got to see your body weight, got to see your limb length, uh, so many different things, but a video will definitely help a little bit. And he'll send a video. Thank you. Oh, you want to send it to my email here? I'll I, leave it up for a second. And then he says something here. Go ahead. What are some of your favorite tricep or bench accessories to build the bench? I'm finding, it's, I'm hard finding to get it's hard for me to get creative. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty simplistic. Um, uh, board presses are one with like two, two different grips, like a close and a wide, and then putting chains on there and bands on there and, uh, working up to a five rep max, a three rep max, um, maybe even a one rep max on some lifts, uh, floor presses with chains, close grip floor presses for assistance work and, uh, working up to a, a heavy set of five set of five and keeping track of things so that when you come back to that floor press close grip with, uh, uh two plates on there and you had two chains, you did five sets of five. Well, when you come back to it, you know, three, four weeks later, you got to beat that record. You know, that that's something, you know, you add five extra pounds. And so we can see the progress the, occurring that way. But um, rolling dumbbells has always been a big one. Um, board pressing has also been a big one. I was doing a lot of raw board work pressing when I was going for 800 bench. And um, I was uh, using 150 pounds of band tension on a three board. 
and uh, two board and kind of finding out where your sticky point is too, Alden. Where are you pushing the bar at your maximal lift? Um, where where are you failing at? Are you failing you know slightly off the chest, in the middle, at the top? And then um, there's so many things we can do. And I can sit here until I'm tongue tied and, and keep talking about it. But it's just uh, we got to have a plan. And that's what we need to do. Get that bench rolling again. So if your bench is stuck, your body is basically acclimated to what you're doing and you need new stimuli. So you got to find new things to, to trick your body into sparking growth. And um, that's why those short rest periods are always important because, you know, they say, uh, Louis told me a long time ago, you know, he said when you take a uh, short rest periods, you're, uh, you're, you're the fibers you just used on the previous uh, set don't have time to recuperate. And so what happens is the dormant ones, and these are fast twitch fibers, have to wake up and finish the load. You're putting a force on your body to to uh, to make those uh, do extra work. So, and um, it definitely works, you know. So there's a couple things. Let's see here. Can't think of another one that I like. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, those are just, uh, like I said, rolling dumbbells on the floor, on the flat bench, we do them on the incline, decline. Rolling dumbbells are really good. But you got to make sure you do them right. Uh, Starrett on our team was doing rolling dumbbells, and I was trying to get the. Uh, let me get rid of this here. I was trying to get him to do. You know, you start here. The first movement isn't to roll them back and do them super strict because that pisses off right here. So the rolling dumbbells is actually you drop and then you roll them back. Now when you're back here, you don't go straight up. You actually kick a little bit and extend up. So it's that it's that it's that elbow movement, and you won't uh, flare up your elbows. But he did them strict. And now he's um, he's not totally you know burnt under here on both sides, but he, it's been tender. And we, we got him. I think uh, Heinz was getting getting some of that cream from Walmart that used to be a prescription. What's it called? It's in the white and orange tube. Um, yeah, I forget the name of it. But anyway, that that stuff works pretty good. Okay, come back to me. Hmm? I'm, I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. Yeah. You sure. Because every time I I was rambling. Go. Sorry. Okay. Let's see. I'm in trouble seeing that one. Howard Weingarten. Ryan, lately, lately, I've been star staring, starting the press. Is it supposed to be staring or starting? starting the press more from the delts. Starting the press more with front delts. I don't know why. Any thoughts? Any thoughts? My delts are getting a bit sore. Yeah, so basically you're... Um, that should say anything. Okay. You're not. You're pushing the bar um, away from you and not yourself away from the bar. So what happens is you're, you're pushing the bar away from you, activating these first. If you actually pinch your shoulder blades and visualize pushing the bar apart as you push up is, is the ticket there. So but a lot of times it turns into, a, into just a front um upper upper body movement and uh, if you have your feet planted right and set back and just visualize coming down and then pretending the bar doesn't move and you push yourself away from the bar i don't know i don't think that's a verbal cue that we have but it's something you have to practice uh, at lighter weight otherwise you're pushing the, the bar uh, away from yourself and that's what we're seeing with the front delt uh, strain <clears throat> You ready? Yeah. You sure? Sure. Um, okay, that was our last. So here, Aiden. Alden. Yep. No. Yeah. Thanks yeah. so much. Alden. Thanks so much for the detailed explanation. I always pay attention and listen to what you have to say. Thank you so much, Ryan. You're welcome, Alden. I, I like to help. Like I said, I've been doing this for a long time and it's good to give it back and um, and do things that have worked for me. And I've tried it on, on other people too. Um, you know, I've taken people's raw bench from 405 to 440 in eight weeks. I've taken another guy from 520 to 600 in, I think it was 12 weeks or something, but um, that was just doing speed bench stuff. And we don't do that anymore, but um, it, it could benefit uh, you if you're, um, you know, a younger guy and you're just starting out, you have somewhat of a foundation of, 300 or something that, that'd be fun to work with and and uh and uh just doing the things that uh work for me because they will they have tended to work for everybody until you get up into the band shirt world then it's things get a little weird 
So like speed benching was kind of wiping us out, but that contributes to the fact that we were living in our, our gear also every, all the time, bench bands, uh, shirts, and uh, now we're doing more without the equipment uh, to, to specifically raise our raw bench, because mine sucks. I mean, I want to do I want to do 585 raw again. You know that that was always a good. I was happy with that. I don't need to any more, any less. But put six plates on there, and bring that shit down and up raw with uh, just rips, wrist wraps and a belt on is that's something I really would like to do again. And I'm running out of time, man. You know I can't do it when I'm 105. So I, that's why I'm trying to figure things out uh, raw wise. That's you'll see you'll see more raw work uh, from me and probably Heinz. Um, there's a few other a uh, couple other. Well, not even a couple. One other guy that uh, has a bench press shirt and uh, stare at a raw lifter. So it's, um, yeah, it is what it is. I wish our crew was a lot bigger and we had a lot more uh, people. But it, unfortunately, you know, it's, uh, it is what it is. We get who we get in this little town in Nowheresville, Washington. Howard, wake Thank up there, man. Susie. Um, Howard said thanks. That makes sense. Thanks. That makes sense. Is that the last one? And also, Howard, another thing, too, is um, pushing towards your feet. Uh, when you're down here, when you push, don't drive it up in, in the drift back thing. Uh, push yourself away from the bar and visualize stretch, stretching the bar this way and driving that upper back through the bench. Yeah. Because if you don't do that, if you're not driving your upper back through the bench, it looks like this. It's all arms. But you want to get up and, and push yourself away like this. Push yourself away from the bar. And the spreading thing will keep you from going backwards and doing elbows turn out. So if you can visualize just slightly like you want to go apart, that'll actually make you push in a straighter line. It's very beneficial. Yeah. I'm sure I'll get off the show here and 20 minutes later, I'm like, damn, I should have said this. I should have said that. I should have said this. There's so many cues. And so yeah, many there's so many different things that work. Not everybody benches the same and not everybody, you know, grabs the bar the same. Some people are thumbless. Some people bench with their toes up and heels up and the list goes on and on. So at the end of the day, though, we got to we got to correct the technique and uh, do specific exercises that are going to be benefit you and keeping track of what you're doing. That's why, you know, we, we have a dry erase board in our gym. It says Canelli Power Team on it, and uh, we write our workouts there. One particular one that's up there is uh, it was a Friday speed bench workout we did, and it was decline, a rolling dumbbell, something or other. And we all came in on Tuesday, and we were like, we were ready to rock. We were 105%. I mean, that's how we gauge our, ourselves uh, mid-workout -work or whatever. We were all on point. So we keep that workout up there. You want a great Tuesday? Do that workout on a Friday. And uh, we're going to find out um, probably tomorrow doing all the decline stuff and, and a lot of reverse stuff. I mean, our front delts are probably gonna feel that. And I have a feeling if they are fatigued and everybody's is somewhat fatigued, we're gonna have a hell of a time getting it off our chest and then a, a pretty good lockout. So well, I'm kind of curious to see that tomorrow, what, what we're made of. So yeah, we keep throwing things in, you know, until we, it, it affects the workout coming up next. And yeah, I'm not competing, I don't think, in eight weeks. You don't so, think? I don't think. You never know. Okay. I might find a magic shirt I put on and everything just comes together. Who knows? Oh, I'm sure that's what's going to happen. I know. I like to think that'll happen. But, um, yeah. So, say lobby. Say lobby. I like talking bench, man, because I, like, I know a lot of stuff. How many years have I been doing this? Since 1996. And I've uh, learned a lot along the way. And, um did a lot of trial and error, did a lot of, uh, you know, a guinea, no. pig, guinea pig, my team back in the early 2000s. Wait, when did you start? Uh, first in-house in competition at a uh, family fitness gym was, I did one in May 1996 and September 1996. My first legitimate, full-blown, real deal, mm. Wabdal Federation meet was uh, May 17th, 1997. Wow. Opened with uh, 407, went 440, went 457 and missed a 474 wow. pretty good for a, a blast shirt is all i had that was the 45 dollars shirt that mm -hmm. that uh, a guy loaned me so i was impressed yeah feel free to ask questions anytime man i like to talk lifting and i want to help anybody that wants to uh wants to be helped so i don't know everything but i i can i know a little bit <laughs> A little bit. I wish I knew it all. Just to be, bench. you know, kind of like a Louis, kind of like a walking Google of the bench press. For the bench press, you, I would say you kind of are. 
and like i said too i haven't looked up that five by five either and i really want to um mm-hmm. I've, I've never followed any any other program and i thought i think it'll be fun i, I want to try it i still haven't even looked it up it's been pretty hectic here i mean there's a lot of things that i they're pulling at me at both ends in life for things to get done and i'm doing the best i can and thank god she's helping me out so if i didn't have my assistant here i would be i'd be done overwhelmed Meow. yeah thanks Meow. chief all right let's get out of here let these people go let them go eat dinner and uh yeah, have a great it night looks like nothing else if and, there's uh, no more questions or comments and uh it doesn't look like it's like the football in. starts in another week i guess right september oh, is, really i thought there's, some ga- there's a couple games there saturday some, i thought remember when i was looking at my yeah not that we're football team. fiends or nothing but we enjoy you know we're there's we're certain people i like to see but we enjoy you know we enjoy i want to see how aaron Rodgers is going to do in his new that team that i'm very curious about so thursday wait a second don't worry about that. Oh, those we'll get that fans. after the show. All right, and, guys. Oh, so it's the end. Oh, never mind. I'm in the wrong. All right. All right. Well, you're rushing me in. Well, we got to go. Nobody wants to see you look at your phone. And Well, maybe they wanted to hear when I'm, the next They probably already is. know. They probably do. Yeah, everybody knows. Only losers that don't well, guys, uh, have a safe weekend out there. Uh, my calendar, what's it say here? Um, we have next week on a Thursday, I believe, uh, next week we should have Pete Santee on the show. Uh, just benched a 650 raw weighing two or 308 and he's an awesome guy awesome raw bench presser and i'm going to connect with him and make sure he has a skype account make sure he has a good internet connection and we're going to sit down and i want to i want to pick his brain a little bit because i want my raw bench to go up and and uh he knows some uh, tips and tricks because he's very good at it and fuck well we might have to go to the gym and just walk me through a simple I just want to know if he did that that workout he sent me because I looked at it once and I just closed it and I was like I, I don't know if he followed I opened it up again and it was like you bench four times a week I'm like I was like um I don't know if it works for you like if right that's what he if that's what he followed to bench 650 I am I'm in shock and awe and I want to know I want to know how he did it what kind of training routine he followed mm-hmm. if he followed that one I I can't imagine bench resting four times a week I just I just can't Sounds it right sounds up your alley. Like, yeah, right. Hey, like you'd really enjoy. It. Yeah, I, I do nothing else but bench. Not me, but yeah. So we'll have to wait and see. Anyway, find guys, one of those for deadlift, four time a week deadlift program. Where's yeah, you that? Yeah, that again. I don't well, know. okay, with my back. Being and it was all percentages, sixty five and whatnot, and RPEs and things like that. So I don't know. Hey guys, have a good one. Ashley, say goodbye. Thank you guys so much for joining us. As always, we really appreciate having you guys we really look forward to yeah thanks for joining thursday us thursday night where we know we get to, to see you guys and hear from you and see the, you know the videos see what you're doing in the gym um and what's going on and we just have a blast getting to it's always fun yeah i get amped up for the show hours with you guys on thursdays so thank you guys for being here um have a fantastic friday a wonderful weekend an awesome start to your next week and we will look forward to seeing you next thursday love you guys have a wonderful night. good night everybody bye